it's a hard business to get into and start making money in right away. You know, you have to really stay at it. There's a lot of times where it's gonna feel like it's just not gonna work, but the people that can like really go through that and put their head down and just keep going forward, those are the people that are gonna be like, you know, really successful. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Road to 10,000. I got my guy Juan with us today. Today, I'm real excited to have my other guy, William Patrick. What's up, William? What's up, man? How you doing? Good, bro. Good, bro. Yeah, so Juan, uh, what you got for us? You got anything in the news? Anything popping off here lately? Yeah, l- l- let's pull up our, our daily Inman. Are you subscribed or you just get the free articles? No, no, dude. I go all the way with Inman. Inman's like the key to, I mean, it really is probably like the depth of content for, you know, breaking news from the real estate community, really. I have to be I mean, honest. I, I was that guy that I was getting the free one and then I'd find a way to get around it and go into a different article, but. I just subscribed. I think it's worth it. I mean, they're probably the top of the the heap when it comes to content, right? Yeah. For, for real estate agents. So listen, they're doing something right because they keep getting the headlines. Here's the one as of today. Gary Keller and the last of the real estate cowboys. No, 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 no. It doesn't say Gary Keller. It says Der- Gary Keller and Dave Lineker. Who's Dave Lineker? He is the founder of Remax. No kidding. I didn't even Dave know Dave Lineker. Dave Lineker is the founder of Remax. No kidding. Yeah. But what's so funny is that they have a picture of neither one of those guys there. <laughs> they have a picture of John Wayne. Look at that. That, that, that. He's running it as a crawling global enterprise as he sees fit. All right. What do you let think me, about let that? Me, let, me, let me see. Go. Are we going to look at that? Bring it Bring it back, bro. I want to see. I got to log article. in, man. Hold on. Hold oh, on. you have to log in. You have to yeah, log in. They got a nice little subscription thing, a dollar for 90 days. I wonder, I wonder how big they would be if they just made it free. Like, I, w- I wonder how, oh, how much. Massive. I, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. dude, dude, That's if they, if they, if they, if they would just open it up instead, they want their little subscription fee. Just think about how massive of a business they would have if they actually open it up. And they monetize it off ads. Pff, I think it'd be like 10 X. And, and the back of all the data that they're collecting from real estate agents. You know, yeah. off of people that visit these articles is ridiculous. Okay. 20 years ago at Remax convention, founder Dave Lineker arrived in a green Humvee, distressed military fatigues and black boots. He delivered a speech dubbed Real Estate Wars. He was doing battle with the dot coms who believed they were entitled to part of the real estate commission. 12 years later, I sat on stage with at the Remax convention in Vegas with Lineker for a one-on-one interview. Let's see. A small group of Palestinian protesters were marching outside because the real estate company's biggest presence in Israel. Hmm. All right. As we were getting mic'd up, Dave leaned over to me and discreetly adjusted a small pistol. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I see where the cowboy thing's coming in here. Uh, and its ankle holster underneath his pant leg. His oversized German shepherd, Max, was standing out standing front and center right off the stage, fixed on his master. Okay. Lineker is one of the last real estate cowboys who stated his iconic and powerful, who started his iconic and powerful real estate brand from nothing until it went public in 2013. He controlled the ownership, direction, and strategy of every decision at the Denver-based enterprise. We're talking about Remax. Today, Lineker is older, wiser, and more buttoned up. His race cars Private golf course in Colorado Rockies and the Remax hot air balloons are now part of the company's allure. Publicly traded company investors are not too keen on those type of extravagances. Personally driven companies are going away as the industry consolidates. One exception is Keller Williams. Okay, so where are they going with this, man? What is the they're deal? Try, they're, try, they're trying to say that a lot of the, the CEOs that have been running these companies, it, it's all been about them in in the sense that it's their personality, it's their ideas, it's their leadership kind of pushing the company moving forward. And that the newer companies, if you look right here, if you scroll to the bottom, is more, I would say, kind of uh, going in a different direction where it's not really about one person. It's the decision makers of hundreds, if not thousands of people kind of steering the direction where the company's headed into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it talks about Keller Williams and then it talks about today's industry as a new generation of leaders. Okay, so they're talking about Zillow's Rich Barton, EXP's Glenn Sanford, Redfin's Glenn Kelman, Realtor.com's David. How do you say his last name? 
Dr. Rowe. Dr. Rowe encompasses Robert Redfkin. 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 Redfkin, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting, man. That's a nice little lineup. We need to get we need to get each and every one of those CEOs or founders Absolutely. of those companies on the podcast, which by the way, I want to make an announcement to to everybody on this show. We just confirmed Grant Cardone to come on the show later in a month or two. So that's exciting to have him on. Also, Glenn Sanford is coming on the show, the founder of EXP. So we're starting to get some bigger names on this podcast. You guys keep following this podcast. Give us a five-star review so you can get out to more real estate agents. Subscribe to our channels and comments and like and all that good stuff. This is a very, very exciting, man. I, I see nothing but like tech companies running the world you know, moving forward, you know, it's so exciting to watch what Tesla is doing and like how it's completely taken over the car industry. Now all car companies are moving towards EV, right? And then you're looking at, they sold a uh, half a million cars last year and looking at selling five to 10 million cars within the next decade per year. I Crazy. mean, it's amazing. It's look, amazing. Look, look what Amazon's, Amazon's doing with retail, Look at what uh, Airbnb is doing with the hotel and the travel industry with Expedia. We're seeing the trends everywhere. And then as usual, real estate's always the last one to adapt. But I feel like the last three years, the real estate tech companies have been picking up. We've been getting a lot more news of it. It's becoming a reality. And uh, yeah, a lot of the franchises are under pressure that if they don't adapt and get with the game, they may become dinosaurs and get left back. So, Well, I don't think they're dinosaurs. You know, I just think that we're evolving like as a human race and business and industries, like the real estate industry is maturing, right? And it's evolving along with every other industry. So it's so cool to watch because we're literally watching history unfold here. And to, it's just so exciting to me to, to watch all this and, and, unfold. And you know what I love? The fact that like all these visionaries and all these leaders, they each have their own vision of the future for real estate. Like you have Glenn going agent centric. You have Zillow obviously going in a different direction, like consumer centric. Redfin is saying, we're going to start our own brokers and put everyone on a salary. And then you have guys like Robert Refkin that's saying, we got to combine the tech with the agent. There's just so many different directions this could go into. And look, you have Open Door. Open Door is just saying, well, the hell with anyone. Let's just buy this ourselves and we're the investors in house. So there's just a lot of directions this cut into and it's exciting times. Yeah, man. William, let's, let's hear from you on this. Like, like you're a very young agent. You've only been in the business for around a year. You've had a lot of success. Okay. So as a new agent coming into the industry during this, you know, technological revolution, if you will, I mean, I can sit back and look at the industry and say, I got in in 2002, there was no social media or hardly any tech in place except for MLS. And I've, wa I've literally watched the industry grow up from an infant to where it is today, which to me, looking at the industry, uh, it looks like to me, just from where from where I where I came from in the industry, this industry looks like it's like a teenager going through adolescence right now. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like it's a teenager going through adolescence, and everybody's freaking out. Hey, it could be terrible twos though. I mean, it could be two instead of a teenager. I don't really know. Well. We'll see. You know, I think the long tail of all this is just going to be so incredible to watch. And, and I'm, I'm here to say, before I get your answer, William, I'm here to say that, that in my opinion, and, and this is debatable, and a lot of people really try to fight me on this. In my opinion, real estate agents are not going anywhere. I just don't see it uh, under any circumstances. Um, I think there's always going to be a huge need for that one-on-one -on -one person that's looking out for your best interest to make sure that everything goes smooth for you specifically. Um, I just think that's always going to be a huge need and all the direct, the direction of the industry in terms of everything. I mean, I'm talking about the Zillow, what they're doing, what Redfin is doing, what EXP is doing, what, um, you know, uh, even, even compass and, uh, you know, all, all, all the platforms, it, it, to me, everything that I see is moving in towards a direction that's pro real estate agent that is going to help the real estate agents uh, produce more and be more efficient. Um, you know, I just see nothing but incredibly positive things. I'm very excited to be in the position I am where 
uh, I can give back to the industry and help and kind of grow my influence more and more and more. Um, you know, it's like, well, Ricky, you're just growing an influence with real estate agents and they're going to be extinct in the next five or 10 years. Absolutely. 100 million percent not right. <laughs> you guys are going to be eating your words on this. Okay. Um, and, and on top of the fact that when you guys say real estate agents are going to be extinct to me, you're being very, you're being very, um, like short-sighted in terms of, are you talking about worldwide here? Because when you're, when you're talking to me and you're saying Zillow is going to take real estate agents out, you're telling, that tells me you're talking about just the U S guys, there's agents in Canada. There's agents all over the world here. Brazil, South Africa, India, Australia, Mexico, Portugal, Costa Rica, right? I mean, Brazil is literally 30 years behind us in terms of technology. They don't even have, they have no MLS. There's no county records. You don't know what stuff sold for down there. Unless you were the agent who sold it, you don't know what the comps are. And, they, and some agents aren't sharing that information with other agents because they want to be the ones who have that data to where they can use that data to help them get more listings and sell more properties. You know, they're stingy with it, some of them. Um, so guys, listen, my brand is global. Okay. And I'm building a global team. I'm in Canada. I'm in South Africa. I'm in, uh, Australia. I'm in Brazil and I'm growing thousands over the next few years. I'm going to have thousands of agents in each of these countries. I'm diversified within the real estate industry. Furthermore, agents in the U S aren't going anywhere, nowhere, nowhere. And that excites me you know, and I love to watch people tell me that it's, that I'm wrong about it. William. I mean, I don't, I don't really know, because like you said, I, I kind of came in the space in the middle of all this stuff. Um, for, from my experience, it seems like, you know, at the end of the day, you, you got to get up and go to work and the failure rate in the real estate industry has always been really high. Um, but, you know, I think, I think it's just going to continue going on the same way it has been in that same trajectory. You know, it's um, the ones who, you know, are consistent every day and go to work are going to find, you know, deals. And that's just how it's been for me. Um, I don't really see it going away because like you said, I mean, you're always going to need that interaction with another human being that's going to represent your best interest. So tell everybody, William, what market you're in, kind of tell them your story. Cause I love this. Cause I'm always telling your story. Um, in terms of like what you went through as a new agent, your first six months, and then kind of how your success, you know, people can look at your success and say, wow, I would love to have that much volume at this point in the game, but they don't understand that they, they don't want to talk about, or even look at what you went through to actually get there. You know what I mean? So tell everybody kind of a quick little story, storyline of your first, I mean, you're 11 months in the business, right? Yeah. Yeah. Tell everybody a quick little storyline of, of your of your seven months, your first seven months in the business to give everybody a little context. Uh, first seven months was just, uh, you know, a bunch of learning and um, I'm trying to figure out what, what I was even doing. I kind of just got into real estate, you know, half heartedly. Um, so, you know, I kind of had to start learning by myself. I was with uh, another brokerage and um, kind of just started trying to learn what I could learn. And that's how I found you know, Ricky on YouTube and um, kind of figured out the whole cold calling prospecting thing. Uh, took that and kind of just ran with it. Started making a bunch of phone calls. Um, you know, took about 14,000 dials to get my first listing, which was, you know, I think uh, about, was it six months in? Something like that. I don't even remember. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's really a, uh, it's a hard business to get into and start making money in right away. You know, you have to really stay at it. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of times where it's going to feel, you know, um, like it's just not going to work, but the people that can like really go through that and put their head down and just keep going forward. Those are the people that are going to be like, you know, really successful. And um, that's what I've come to find out. I mean, like, it seems like I'm just running into things all the time now. Like listings are just falling in my lap. When, when I first started, it just seemed like impossible. So. 
Cool. Like, tell everybody like where you are in terms of stats, you know, like how many listings, how many closings, how many pendings, kind of where you are with everything. Yeah. So I've had a uh, 10, 10 closings, um, should have, I think 15 by like mid March. Um, and let's see, what, what was the other question? It was like closings. And so I, I think I've had like 17 listings total. Two of them are like, wow. Wait, like wait, how many, how many active listings right now? Uh, just two, like everything else is okay. Under- okay. No, yeah. I love it. I love it, man. So you mean like, okay. So, so, okay. Let's just, let's just kind of consolidate that. Okay. So 11 months in your 10 closings in, right? Hmm. Okay. It should have 15 or so by, by the time your first 12 months. Okay. So 15 closings in your first 12 months. So I had like four or five my first year. Okay. So you're going to do like triple my business, triple or even quadruple what I did in my first year in terms of business. Not only that, but how many people are getting your weekly email? Oh man. Uh, it's gotta be at least like, I don't know, like probably close to a thousand. That's what I'm saying. Like 900 to a thousand people. Like I didn't even know to do a weekly email or that I should even be collecting data. You know, that I should even be collecting data. Data is the key to everything. These companies, Zillow, Google, Facebook, Amazon, they're all like addicted to data. They can't get enough. They're just, it's a drug to them. And uh, we need to think of our real estate businesses the same way. We need to take note of what these big corporations are doing and realize it's all about the data. The more data you have and the bigger your database is, and the more, because you, once you have the data, then you can market to that data, right? And build your brand. And the bigger the database is, the bigger your brand is, and the bigger your business is. It's real simple stuff. And just the fact that you're doing the weekly email and collecting the data right? The fact that you've closed 10 deals in your first 11 months. A lot of agents come in and they say, I want to do a deal a month my first year. They don't sell anything for seven months like you, but then you kept going, collecting data, trying to help people, trying to make it happen. And then boom, you're going to average out to close way more than one a month. 15 over a 12 month period is much more than one a month. It's like one and a half a month. Not even that much, like 1.2 a month or something like that for your first year. That's incredible, bro. You know, and like to have a thousand people know who you are and, and, and you're building your brand with. I mean, that's your first year. So if, if the numbers keep going and you go from a thousand to two thousand in your second year, if you pick up another thousand the same way you did in the first year, if you go to two thousand, I mean, watch out, bro. You know, watch out. Yeah, man. I mean, it's, it's like such a snowballing thing. I mean, like it's the first 12 months is like, I think, um, like 10 closings or whatever, but in 2021 there's been like six and there will be 11 mid-march and that's just in 2021 so it's like all of 2020 there was like i guess about four and then like in the first like three months of 2021 it'll be like 11 so nice. so william why don't you go ahead and tell everyone what, what your day-to-day schedule is like tell us about uh your routine uh mm-hmm. how often you're prospecting stuff like that man when i first started it was a completely different routine it was like seven days a week calling for like at least five or six hours a day, um, at least 500 dials a day. Um, but right now that I actually have business, it's kind of, I'm trying to get better at time blocking um, because, you know, there's so many times when I feel like I have to go do something in the morning. Um, but what I try to do is, you know, get up relatively early, you know, around seven o'clock. Um, I'm usually asleep by uh, 11 o'clock or something like that. But um I'm prospecting every, like pretty much any time during the day when I have any free time at all, I'm on the phone, um, cold calling or doing follow-ups. Um, but yeah, my day is kind of random right now. And I'm kind of trying to find that groove of exactly how to like structure my day. That's like my biggest struggle right now is trying to figure out how to time block it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Now that, that, see, you're right in the phase where, you've broken through the fact that, okay, you're going to succeed, you know, which is, which is only 10% of people who try to become agents. Mm -hmm. So that's like the first step (laughs) for like an agent is, okay, am I going to succeed? Am I going to be part of the 10% of agents who try this, who succeed? So we've broken through that part. We know that you're going to succeed. So once you know that, okay, now we're, we're, now we need to fully commit. Right. And then you start becoming busy kind of, on top of the fact that you're still trying to make your calls and build your database and build your business. So it's like, okay, now you're in the middle 
place where you have to try to balance, you know, handling your business and continuing to grow your business and doing the things that actually got you to where you are. And that's always a really tough place to be. Some agents get to that place and it's like a fork in the road and some agents lay down and they just kind of start floundering. And that's where you see their production just kind of, it, you know, it was doing this and then boom, it hits that little, they hit that block and then they just kind of like can't handle it. So it's great that you're sitting here telling us that you got to figure out how to balance it out and make it smooth. I think the biggest advice I could give you on that is to slow down just a little bit, right? And it's because people way, 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 way overestimate what they can do short term. Like they think they can do like 20 deals in the next three months, right? And But, and, but then they t completely underestimate what they can do long term. Whereas like if you just slow down a little bit and just continue churning away little by little, and on the long term, you're going to be massive, you know? So here's the thing. If you're closing deals and you're not making as many calls as you were making in the beginning because you're closing deals and working listings and showing property and stuff, give yourself permission to say, it's okay that I, I only add 500, 6, 700 this year instead of 1,000 to my database, you know? Because if you look at, if you look at how much time spent actually that you have towards, you know, but okay. It, it's like, if I close 30 deals this year and hit icon, but I only add 500 people to my database, it's kind of like you sacrificed some cold calling time and some database building time to go out there and close 30 deals. That's an okay swap. The punchline is, is that you're still net positive 500 more people in your database. So you just have to like give yourself permission to like slow down in one area to excel in another area while still maintaining the fact that we are still going to continue to move the bar up and up and up in terms of our database. And, you know, you don't, I mean, I know, I know you use social media, right? What do you, what are you doing on social media that's working right now? Um, I, I like to just post what I'm doing every day, um, you know, and, just kind of show the world like what it, what it kind of takes. I, I kind of like, I don't really use Instagram to market towards buyers and sellers, clients, stuff like that. I kind of just do it for agents um, and stuff like that. Cause you know, I'm trying to be like a little mini Ricky and help other people um, grow their business and stuff. But um, yeah, so I'm really just using Instagram for that kind of stuff right now. Cool stuff, man. And then uh, as far as recommendation for new agents that, like I said, you, you ran seven months, without closing your first deal, what would you give to new agents just starting out there are having success in their first six months, 12 months, whatever it may be? Man, just hit the phones, just, or just do whatever you want to, to talk to people. Cause I mean, at the end of the day, the person who talks to the most people is going to, you know, do the most deals. And it's really that simple. Um, and also like, just trust yourself. Um, when I first started doing it, like my first listing agreement, I was like, why are you letting me do that? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? But once you do it, um, it, it's really simple, you know, and when you have a question, you just reach out and ask. So, I mean, just, just trust yourself, um, be confident that you can do it and, you know, just try to talk to as many people as you possibly can. Cool. Cool. So this podcast is called road to 10,000. And the whole purpose is, is to document our journey, uh, Juan and I's journey to 10,000 agent team globally. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you're part of that 10,000 right? You're part of the team. You joined us. When did you join us? In June of uh, 2020. Okay. So June of 2020. And what would you say is, has been your experience as far as just being a part of our team and being a part of what we do and using us as support and just the whole nine yards? What has the experience been like for you? Because you did start out with a different company yeah. um, and then moved over. So what, what has been, you know, tell everybody your experience. Man, um, it was kind of a life changer for me. Like uh, when I first started, like Ricky said, I was with another company um, going through the you know traditional brokerage route, doing their training, all that good stuff. Um, and I guess they were kind of like spoon feeding agents, like the normal what to do, you know, to get leads, how to work your database, all this stuff. And uh, Ricky just kind of gave it to me straight, um, just told me exactly what I needed to do, laid out a blueprint for me. And, um, you know, it was kind of just on me to execute. So, you know, I did that and, um, you know, having Ricky and Juan and Joe and, you know, all the people above me um, to hold me accountable, 
it was just, uh, you know, it, it's something that, you know, you really need when you're, you know, you don't have a real boss, you know, you're your own boss. You really need people that are going to hold you accountable. Um, people that are out here working harder than you that you need to compare yourself to and, you know, make yourself work harder. Um, so, you know, it's, it's just been really good in the uh, aspect of accountability, um, role models, mentorship. I mean, anytime I have a question, I can reach out to probably 20 different people to ask, um, you know, so it's, it's just been really helpful for me. And, you know, I, I love being a part of the team. It feels like a family and um, it's just a bunch of hardworking agents who, you know, we're all on the same page. So I love it. Are you now there, there's a, there's an objection out there um, about EXP for new agents and you're basically a new agent. Mm -hmm. uh, when you came on board, you're only a couple months in, um, you know, just real quickly, as far as being a new agent, would you suggest this for brand new agents? Cause a lot of people think, Oh, there's this, there's not support. You're, you know, this and that, you know, and I tell everybody, this is the best place to be <laughs> for a new age. This is the best place to be for a new agent. I have tons of new agents on my team and they're all crushing it by the way, all over the place. But just coming from, from you being a new agent, coming from that different perspective of actually being the new agent, you know, joining, um, you know, coming from, I mean, you got the experience at a different brokerage and this brokerage being a new agent, you know? Right. Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, you know, I can see why some people might think that in terms of EXP as a brokerage in general, um, if you choose the wrong person to sponsor you and come in with, then, you know, you might not get that much support. Um, there's always the mentorship program and stuff like that, but coming into the diamond group is just like choosing an entirely different brokerage. If you go in with somebody else, I mean, when you join the diamond group, you have Ricky 24 seven, one-on-one -on -one access all the time. You have Juan, you have Joe, you have, I mean, I can name like 10 other people that I can literally reach out to anytime. Um, and you know, it's, there's just a ton of mentorship. There's, I mean, there's zoom meetings, there's one-on-one -on -one calls, there's anything you could possibly think of. I mean, it's, it's there. So, I mean, there's a mentorship program too, like I had just mentioned, but I mean, there's, there's a ton of, ton of different resources you can use and it's definitely not something where, you know, there's not enough people you can reach out to for help. So, yeah. So, you know, as you start to get into your second year here and uh, document your journey and everything, where can everybody find you online? What is the best place where people can find you, follow your journey, reach out, ask you questions, so on and so forth? I definitely say Instagram um, at real estate, William. That's uh, the best place to find me. So yeah, you can go follow me on Instagram at real estate, William. Cool. At real estate, William on Instagram, go there, follow William. I'll put the, uh, put the link in the description as well. You guys go follow William, reach out, DM him, um, connect with him. He's willing to, I've watched him help other agents that are brand new and just pour out everything and just tell him everything he could possibly tell him to try to help them because he went through it. He went through the seven months of grind with no sales. And then all of a sudden, boom, everything started happening. So he, he understands the position that, you know, if you're a brand new agent, he understands, uh, and he wants to help you through it. So definitely reach out to William. If you guys have any questions as a new agent, um, you know, because he's, he's more than willing to share Juan, anything else to add to today's show? We are at 605 agents as of this morning. That's the same number we were at last time, last no. show. I think we were at 601. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I, I love this part. I love this part. Like right before it blows <laughs> up, right before it blows you, you, up. You do, you do know we, we, the last time we recorded was 48 hours ago. <laughs> so j just think about that. Four agents in 48 hours. That's like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, here's the thing. Um, I'm going to add 200 to my team by end of March. I think it's that's possible, where man. I'm at. That's where I'm at and Absolutely. be somewhere around 1500 to 2000 by the end of the year. So yeah, it's exciting stuff. If you guys have any interest whatsoever in teaming up with me or Juan or William, just reach out to any of us. We, we are more than happy to get on a call or whatever we need to do, uh, to help you, um, and find out if it's a good fit. You guys give us a five-star review on everywhere you can, Amazon, iTunes, 
wherever you can give reviews and and hit the like button and comment and subscribe and all that good stuff. We really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed the show and got a lot of value out of it. Uh, William, appreciate you coming on. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Juan, good to see you. Likewise. And, uh, we'll, we'll see you guys on the next show. Let's go.